Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Steve, and you're watching Comics TV. Hi, I'm Tommy Gunn. Susie Owen. Buddha. Jacqueline. You're watching Comics TV. to Comics TV, the only comic book show to tell it like it is. Reviews featured on today's show include More Than Mortal, Soul Wind, and Galaxian, Star Wars, Grendel Tales, and Reacher. We'll feature Sergio Aragones in our uh, interview segment. There's also Check Your Comic Queue and a dual review of Cryptic Writings of Megadeth. So stay tuned for lots of comic book fun. As you can tell, I'm talking a little funny today. I had my wisdom teeth out four good, days good. ago. Good, 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 good. Still hurting me a little bit, so hopefully we'll get through this show without any major problems. <laughs> now let's kick off today's show with Steve's first exciting comic book review. Well, Mike, I'm really sorry to hear about your teeth. Me too. <laughs> no, Matt. My first book is Star Wars Crimson Empire, number one of Six from Dark Horse Comics. It's two dollars and ninety-five cents. Written by Mike Richardson, Randy Stradley, and art by Paul Galusi. Inks by P. Craig Russell. Mm. Quite a group of creators gathered there. When one of the Empire's top protectors, known as the Crimson Guard, disappears to join the rebels, it's up. It's an all-out war to find him, bring him back, and kill him. But if they can't find him to kill him, so they got to find him so he doesn't disclose all the Empire secrets over to the Rebels. Uh, the Star Wars story was written excellent. This, I mean, I can't brag enough about it. Uh, it was well written. It was the best Star Wars story I have ever read. Um, the art in it was also excellent. It was well drawn, very, very crisp and clear. Special thing about this book is you get a story about a character you hardly ever see in any of the books or in the movies. You only see them once when the Emperor comes down. It's a really, really well-written book. I give this book a hot, hot, hot. Pick it up. It's a great read. Excellent. Excellent. Topping the comics news. The final sales figures for 1997 are in from Diamond. Comic distributors topping the list with sales dollars is DC, followed by Marvel, Image, Dark Horse, and Wizards of the Coast. Topping the sales figures for volume is Marvel, followed by DC, Image, Dark Horse Comics, and lastly, Wizard Press. After the top three, it drops the peanuts for sales volume. The last one, that's the fifth one is Wizards in both ones, but they're mm -hmm. not the same company. Mm -hmm. On the hour in Paradise Chat on AOL, on Tuesday, January 13th, John Byrne announced that Wonder Woman number 136 will be his last issue, capping a three-year run on the title. Mm. Ghost Rider orders are so low on the final issue that it has been canceled instead. Editor Tom Brevroot said it will be held back and printed at a future date. Old Comics TV friend Ken Lashley will follow Mike Ryan on the pencils for Wetworks. Mm. Actress Jada Pinkett will write a new comic book for Awesome Entertainment called Menace, which debuts in April. It will be penciled by Dan Fraga. Jada is married to Will Smith, who has also teamed up with Awesome's Rob Liefeld for a movie project. Stay tuned for more Comics TV news later in today's show. 
My first review today is More Than Mortal number one from Liar Comics. It's $2.95, created and written by Sharon Scott, and art is by Steve Furchow. This is one heck of a comic book. Scott has made a wonderful, entertaining comic with fantasy, strong characters, and an excellent story. The book starts off with a medieval battle scene. This leads us to Deirdre, a beautiful young woman living in what appears to be a convent or something. She is the one having the dreams of these battles. She's not well liked by the sisters there because they say she just doesn't fit in. The story continues with more battle scenes and several deaths happening around Deirdre while she sleeps. Hmm. This is an excellent tale, a woman with fantasy, creative writing, and excellent characters. The art is fantastic. Without the overbearing image type women, it is clean and colorful. The book is far superior than most independent comic books. A must have for any fantasy reader. I believe it would appeal to women with the strong characters, and it's a definite, definite hot. Still coming up, the dual review of The Cryptic Writings of Megadeth. Mm. And next, an interview with Sergio Argones. But first, <laughs> let's check your comic cue. Do it, Steve. What is Superman's real father's name? My goodness. I didn't know Life. he had a real father. I Heavens, thought he only had a fake father. Heavens to be. And uh, Jim knows the answer. We'll give you the answer, though, later in today's show. Mm -hmm. First, we're going to take you to our interview, which is part two of the Sergio Aragones chat. Sergio is the great guru creator and a longtime Mad Magazine artist. Let's go take a view at that. So how many cons do you go to every year? Um, in the States I go to about four or five, and in Europe I go to about two or three. Oh, yeah? the, the, the next one is the one in, um, in San Diego, mm -hmm. and after that is the one in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, really? uh, in September. And then I go to Spain to, uh, to uh, a few of them, you know, so it's uh, is it, all over. Is it uh, for MAD? Is it no, for, uh, in wow. Spain they publish GRU really? in Spanish. Oh, really? And uh, they have it in every language. In Malaysia they sell the English. Really? That's not me now. <laughs> That's great. Now, um, anybody else? No? Yes. Okay. No? Yes? That'll be it. Okay. <laughs> Can't think of anything else. Nothing else you coming to mind. You cannot think of anything. Uh, when yeah. you started, uh, I started when I was in go. high school. See, I don't even have I to ask I was very questions. young. I don't remember not drawing. <laughs> You've done this a million times. A million times. The fans uh, are a lot different in Europe than they are over here. Uh, yes. The following uh, is a lot different. The, the following is the same over there. What changes is the attitude of the of the industry of the business over there. They are more of the content. Here they are more of the sales of the business end of it. So it's a very different approach to the comics. So what part do you like better? Do you like the, uh, the, the drawing or the writing part of it? Um, well, you don't actually write the, the, the group Yes, stuff. I do. Do you? I, I thought Mark worked with you. Well, Mark helped me. I write the way I talk. Oh, and then okay. Mark's, uh, <laughs> I come with all the plot. Oh, so he And, and Mark gets the, the, um, the pencils already all finished. Then he erases all my dialogue and writes it right. <laughs> 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 Which is a great improvement. <laughs> and uh, uh, with that, Mark, he'll be a completely different. Oh, yeah. Uh, because he right. changed the, the spirit. He's such a good writer, mm -hmm. good, good sense of humor, that it makes a very good combination. Right. The, you divide your life in, in the two parts. The, the writing part is because every gag, even though it has no word, it has to be thought. Right. And a lot of people confuse writing with thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you have to write a gag. In your head, it's a little story mm -hmm. it's, uh, without words, but it still has a beginning, a middle, of an end. Right. So I spend half a day thinking the story right. for Gru or for Mad, or, and then oh, the gag. And at the end of the day, after let's say at two o'clock, I go to my studio and then I draw it. So you divide. So I enjoy both. Yeah. Both are memorable. Uh, one is easier than the other. Drawing is very simple. It's sort of like a matter of routine, as a matter of fact. You know? It becomes. You draw them all as quick as you do that, like that. No. You know. Uh, 
least I have drawn seven million and a half times. You know. <laughs> Jeff Smith from Bone, one of the best artists in the business. Uh, but the thinking, you have to think new ideas all the time. So right. that's that's hard to to do. Exactly. But how with practice, it becomes quite easy. So how many of those marginals have you done? Think of it, uh, 25 in every issue, oh, yeah. uh, at least 10 times a year for 36 years. A lot of so, uh, a few thousand. Yeah. A few thousand. Yeah, I know. Now, yes. I heard you saying earlier that uh, you don't sell any of your original. Well, I make little sketches and right. uh, we've been, I, I figured out that when I die, I won't be able to produce more comics so my family can make a living selling my original artwork, you know. So it's like an inheritance. Mm -hmm. But uh, some people have wanted so much, and I have a friend who's an agent, so I decide to let some of the originals go out. Yeah. Well, that's great. Your uh, your work's always uh, always been fun. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it. You got a lot of people waiting here. You All can right. have fun with them. Why they're just people. <laughs> <We're> just people. <laughs> just Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Welcome back. My next book is Grendel Tales. The Devil's Apprentice, number three of three from Dark Horse Comics. This $2.95 book is written by Jeff Lang, the art by Steve Lieber and Bernie Marut. This is a story which puts a very, very young Grendel against a very old enemy, the Prince of Darkness. The big clue here is, if you don't already know, that they are father and son. This all leads to the fight of the century, but will Grendel survive this grueling fight? The story was not bad, but it is definitely, definitely missing something. What? I cannot stick my finger on it. The art was terrible. I am a fan of the cool, flashy pages of the 90s, so I didn't like the art. It sort of had a 50s, 60s style to it. I really didn't like it. On the other hand, the cover was really excellent. And an overall rating, I give Grendel Tales the Devil's Apprentice, a not hot pass by this one. Mm -hmm. You're 50 50 today. 50 50 so far. One is greatest <laughs> book ever read, and the other one is. Terrible not book. Hot. <laughs> My next book is called Soul Wind. Book one The Kid from Planet Earth by C.S. Morse and Image Comics. There's a collection of the first chapters of this originally self published comic. It's $9.95. This is an interesting tale, blending several different books, including parts that look very Chinese, along with a terrific fantasy story. It has to do with a legend called Soulwind, a young boy named Nick, talking animals, aliens, and more. Nick thinks he's out playing with all these beans, and he doesn't realize he's not anywhere near his home, and he's been brought there to be their savior. Yes, it's a twisted tale that is very enjoyable to read, and it would probably appeal to Bone fans or anyone that enjoys a very good story with some magic and fun. So when book one is a definite, definite hot, and I would recommend this book to anyone. Mm. Don't forget, you can write us here at Comics TV at P.O. Box 220, Buffalo, New York, 14225, or email us at Comics TV at localnet.com. Now... Back to the one and only Steve for another insightful, delightful, frightful comic book review. Insightful. It's better than outsightful. My last solo review of this show is from DC Comics. This book is issue number 34 of Preacher. It's a $2.50 book written by Preacher great Garth Ennis and art by Steve Dillon. How can I start my review? Hmm. Let me see. I have no idea. I could not understand one page of this book. But on a good name, our space is back. The story is, well, who knows? I have the first clue. I don't know what Ennis is talking about. The art is excellent. It's a well-drawn-out book. So at least I could look at the pictures and sort of try and figure what was going on. But that still didn't help. Uh, this is definitely an adult book. It's not for kiddies. But overall, I give it a preacher number 34, a not hot. If I could have understood it, well, maybe I would have liked it a little better. Two out of three. Two out 66 of three. Sixty-six percent. He didn't like 66 it. Sixty-six and a third percent. I didn't like this week. That's not good. No. Marvel and Paramount Studios have decided to cancel the Star Trek line of comics altogether after attempting to first revamp them. Editor Tim Toohey says that most of the line will wrap up in May, if not sooner. 
Two, he also states that Marvel Vision is getting the axe. Mm. Canadian comic creator Greg Highland is moving Lethargic Lad to Destination Entertainment. The animated Silver Surfer will debut on February 7th on Fox at 11.30 a.m. The show begins with a three-part origin and 13 episodes have been produced. With eight more scripts being written, I can see that Jim is just foaming at the mouth waiting for this. Oh, I'm telling you. It'll end up right after the Hulk at 5 in the morning on USA. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, yes. More bad news from Marvel. Despite earlier denials, Marvel has canceled Marvel Team Up and its longest running, highest numbered series, Journey into Mystery. That's terrible. terrible. Oh, one of my favorites. The latest news from filmmaker Kevin Smith has thrown cold water on speculation who will be writing Daredevil in conjunction with the pending deal between Marvel and Event, claiming he is just too busy. Oh, darn. You got to take time out for that. You know, just like too much coffee, man. You gotta yes, take time exactly. off for that. Today's comics news was brought to you in part by CBEM, Newsarama, Zen Entertainment, and the Comic Book Club. That's Thanks, right. Thanks, guys. My final review today is a new review of an old book in a new format. Confused? Well, yeah. so am I. Yeah. <laughs> Galaxian is a self published tale from Helicon Comics out of Ontario, Canada. Galaxian was originally half of the mini comic Sal Magundi. We met creator Tara Gun uh, Jenkins some years back when Galaxian was just a young story. At that time, I found it to be very readable and entertaining. Galaxian is a sci-fi adventure, not unlike Wandering Star. Tara prefers to give her characters a manga look, which is very appealing. The story is very female character driven. The basic idea is that the Galaxian is a science ship trying to make a jump into hyperspace, which has yet to be successful. It's a good sci-fi tale with a little Star Trek in it. Jenkins does a very good job of creating unique characters. Her art is good, but lacks a lot of definition. It is simple with few backgrounds. When she does do backgrounds, the details aren't bad. Galaxian has made the jump to full-size comic very nicely. Each issue runs $2.75. It's a good book, and if you like sci-fi tales, it is enjoyable. On the CTV rating scale, I give it a hot. Mm -hmm. And now, the answer to this week's Check Your Comic View. What was Superman's real father's a name? And what is that, Jim? Vito Corleone. Okay. Oh, he Ron, Ron Brando. Yeah, right. And the answer is Jor-El. Jor-El, if you knew that answer, you are definitely a comic book genius. Marlon Brando. Yes. Gene, you are a genius. Wow. What would you do? if you had to choose between the buffalo and the giraffes between a flower or an elephant what would you choose what if you had to decide between a hundred year old tree and a million year old beach between drinking clean water or breathing clean air. Would you make the right choice? Would there be a right choice? Now there's a way to help. Not just one, but all these things. Earthshare, the world's leading environmental groups working together. It's one choice we can all live with. Ask your employer about workplace giving. Today, on the Dual Review, we bring you the cryptic writings of Megadeth from Chaos Comics. <laughs> this is a $2.95 book, it's issue number two, full color. Basically what they've got here is they've got a book, a series of books that they're basing on Megadeth. Their uh, newest album. Dave, well, it's, it's on, they're going through a bunch of their albums, I guess, because uh, they've got Killing Is My Business. I think that's the album they're working on here. Yeah. Um, and what they're doing is this, is this is all with Dave Mustaine's blessing. They take a story or a song. And they write a story. To they it. write a short story. They put the lyrics in. They write a short story to go with it. Uh, what do the, you think? The first story in this one yeah, first, uh, dealt first with a boyfriend that killed his girlfriend. Called Last Rites Loved to Death. Uh, he kills her because he says that she was uh, very loose with all her his friends. Mm -hmm. And he takes his own life. And what happens is... They see each other in hell, and he says he doesn't want her, and all of a sudden you see the demons taking her life, basically 
going to tear her apart, and he realizes, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, the second story is killing is my business, and business is good about an assassin. That one I really, really enjoyed. Um, the only thing I must comment on this one is there was so much blood and gore in this book. Mm. I, I mean, from page yeah. one, even from the cover, it's yeah. just covered in blood. Yeah, this is... This yeah. is definitely an adult book. Yeah. This is not for kids. I know a lot of kids, younger kids, like the the mega death uh, Chandra and everything. And what is going to really, bottom line, what's going to ruin it is parents don't like to see books like this out. Now, you know mega death has a huge following, 13, 14, 15-year-old kids. Right away, they're going to listen to the album, want to run out and get the comic book. And they're going to see this comic book and see all this death, mayhem, blood, gore. Parents are going to see this. They're going to get you very upset about this. Um... Now, those who, well, I would have to guess that those would be the parents that wouldn't let their kids buy a Megadeth exactly. CD to begin with. Exactly. These are the kids that would do it behind their parents' back. Mm -hmm. But all in all, though, the book was well written. I, I, I did enjoy it, yeah, it on the other it hand. Was, it was entertaining. The artwork was really the good. The artwork was very good. It was illustrated. All three were by Robert E. Brown. Two of the stories were written by Montes. They appear to be brothers. And Brian Polito did the last one, which was called Chosen. Chosen Ones about... Uh, Chosen warriors to destroy the evils of the world, and that was a really good story too. Now the uh, killing is my business wasn't bad. I mean, it, it was an okay story. Yeah, that was like the okay story of the whole book. The um, the uh, the first one was interesting. I liked that one. The the guy he's he's sitting there with his dead girlfriend, blood all over, and you know, and then they end up in hell and everything. It, it wasn't a bad story. I, yeah. I, I, oh no, I would have to give this a hot rating. I really like it. I I do like Megadeth. That's why I wanted to go out and pick this book up to try and follow it, and mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed sure. it a lot. There, like there, I said, though, it is an adult-oriented book. Definitely, because of the blood and, and gore, it is very, it is very adult. The, the art is very, very good, though. I mean, if you're uh, if open-minded, if you don't mind your kids reading that, or if you like to read that stuff, it's excellent. If you like mega, if you if you don't like Megadeth, you probably won't like it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I mean, if you like it, want to crank the tune up while you're reading it, it, oh, might, it might, might be enjoyable. Man. Exactly. Exactly, but I give this a hot, definitely. You know, it's not bad. I think I'm going to give it a hot, too. Uh, wow, it's, we it's, agreed. It's, it's not the greatest book I've ever read, but I, I, I forgot those first two stories I, I, I thought were pretty good. So yeah. it, it's not a great book, but, but I did like it. It's worth the two ninety five. dollars Sure. So I'll, I'm going to have to go with it, give that one a hot cool. also. And now for my next segment. Uh, every week I try and I... Uh, can you get a close-up on that, Jimmy? Get a close-up on this, Jim. I try and bring in a new toy. Well, my son had a fit today because I stole one of his. Oh, no. I was walking through KB Toys, and he tripped. My, uh, my nephew, Richie, had this, and he got it for Christmas. And I had to go and buy one. This is, like, the coolest thing in the world. Um, this is a Batman bank. It's really, really detailed. It's hard plastic. It's got a rubber face. And it says, ready? Hi, Freeze. Vengeance isn't power, but the it moves too. That's true power. Hey, freeze. The heat is on. I'm Batman. Look, cape blowing action there. Music. This lights up down here. His face lights up. His Batman signal lights up. It's cool. Got a little cape blowing back there. It's, it's pretty neat. I it's say. it's pretty neat. They sell for about twenty bucks. Um, it's also a bank. A little George what, Clooney action. It, it's a bank. If you put in a coin, it goes off. Or if you press the little rock down at the button, it goes off. My son just absolutely loves it. He gets he gets to put a quarter in every night before he gets to bed, you know. But I really thought this was worth the money. The detail on it is is really cool too, because I mean you got a lot of detail in it. Mm -hmm. I, I found it I found it pretty entertaining when he showed me it. Very, very much so. He got a kick out of it. Yeah, so. I thought it was pretty neat. If you see one, pick one up. They'd make a great gift. Yep. Anybody who likes Batman would definitely make a great gift. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in this week. We hope you enjoy the show, especially with my sore mouth here. And hopefully next week we'll be back to completely normal. Promise not to pull them out with players next As week. always, let us know what you think. As an incentive to get you off your duff or to write us, to, uh, to write us the first letter via email or snail mail to reach the Comics TV office. Giving us a little details, telling us what you think about the show, what you like about the show, what you don't like, we'll receive a Comics TV goodie bag. Goody, goody. Coming next week is a dual review of Body Doubles and an interview with Terry Beatty. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Steve Prisbell. Just don't remember, look for us. Don't remember. In or don't forget 
to not forget to look for us Don't remember. for our Comics TV in your face tour. It'll be coming. Here's one of the prizes for the grand prize, a Violator Gold from Series 1 worth a lot of cash. Mm -hmm. That's going into the bag, grab bag to give away. Yep. But as we say, reading is a good investment. So when you visit that local comic book store, tell them you've seen us on Comics, comics TV, TV, the world's best comic scariest. book television show. Scariest. And scariest. Yeah. And coolest. Over there. And best. We're on that camera. I know. I'm looking at you both cameras. Always look I got at one camera. eye going at both you, cameras. Every week, the end of the show, he's looking at that camera. You got to well, turn that off. 